Manx Murders, adapted from his book by Keith Wilkinson, read by Mark Clift. The Tragedy of the Killia Family. In 1868, James Killier was 33 years old and worked at Foxdale Mines as a miner's labourer. His wife's name was Esther and the couple had five daughters. The oldest Selina, aged seven, then Emily, Anna Louisa, Elizabeth Esther and the youngest Madeline, aged three months. The family lived fairly comfortably and James was a loving husband and father. His brother-in-law, Archibald Shimon, also lived with them, working as a labourer. In March 1868, James went for a drink one night after work and came home not entirely sober, according to his wife, who claimed he also said, I have been speaking of people whom I ought not to have spoken of. Over the next few weeks, he became increasingly depressed and withdrawn. On Wednesday the 1st of April, he came home from work and said they should leave for America, and that he was about to lose his job at the mines. His wife discovered that this was untrue. The next day, when he returned from work, he told his wife, who was cutting potatoes, you are not to cut much, as the potatoes are not going to get leave to grow, as when they come up, the blossoms will be pulled. He was also reported to have said, my cows may be burnt in the cowhouse, my sheep will be killed on the mountains, and the house burned over our heads. He was very restless and hardly slept at all that night. On the Friday morning, he took three of his children to see the corpse of a little nephew who was to be buried later that day. When he returned home, his wife was worried about his behaviour and asked her brother to keep a close eye on him. He wandered into the garden and sat next to a well while his wife worked in the cottage. She was just taking the baby out of the cradle when she heard a cry of Dada, Dada from outside. She saw that two children were missing and James held another girl over the well. He dropped her in before turning on his wife. After a brief struggle, he grabbed the baby and threw her in too. Esther ran off screaming for her brother as Emily walked into the yard. Her father threw her into the well too before jumping in himself. Archibald Shimin arrived after a few minutes and went down the well several times in the bucket, bringing up four of the girls. Two were dead, the other two unhurt. The bodies of James and the eldest child had sunk to the bottom and were brought up later after being dragged out with a boat hook. The inquest took place in the cottage at Dawlish Ard the following day, before the High Bailiff of Douglas, Samuel Harris, and a jury of eleven men. A report in the Manx Sun described the scene. There sits a woman whose frame is convulsed with the agony of grief, while at a little distance from her are two fine little girls, one about five, the other about two years of age. We turn into a room on the left, and there, stretched on the humble bed, covered with a white counterpane, which is rivalled in colour by the faces of the dead, are four bodies, a father and his three daughters. The father is a man of some three and thirty years, a handsome man. Beside him is his infant daughter Madeline, next is the eldest daughter Selina, nearly seven years of age, last Louisa, about four years of age. Hard indeed would be a heart unmoved by so touching a spectacle. Esther Killia, the wife of the dead man, gave evidence. She related the terrible events of the previous day. A report in the Mona's Herald described how Mrs Killier was so overcome with emotion that she could not proceed for a length of time. Indeed, everyone present was visibly and deeply affected, and you could see the eyes of the strong, stalwart men suffused with tears, none being more visibly affected than the worthy coroner himself. Archibald Shimon gave evidence 
before Dr Percy Ring described how all three girls had died from drowning. The jury returned a verdict to the effect that all four had died from drowning and that James Killier was, at the time, in a state of temporary insanity. The spokesman for the jury said they wished to express their approval of Shimon's bravery in going down the well and rescuing two of the children. The funerals took place the following day at Patrick. Another report described the scene. The bodies were all interred in a double grave. It is estimated that there could not have been fewer than from two to three thousand persons present, and there was scarcely a dry eye to be seen. Indeed, Callas must have been the heart which could have witnessed such a mournful spectacle and still remained unmoved. Music